Hey y'all, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these really cute and kind of creepy headstone pumpkin patch cupcakes. Really awesome for Halloween. But anyway, I'm also going to be using a new brand of hand mixer from Redmond. And if you'll give me a second, I'm going to tell you a little bit about them in the beginning of the video. Hey y'all, we are back in the kitchen. So yes, the lighting and the sound is a little bit different. But anyway, I thought I could cram in one more Halloween goodie because y'all have been asking for another one. I could cram in one more Halloween goodie before Halloween actually gets here because I know a lot of y'all are still going to have your parties actually on Halloween night during the day of Halloween. So here's one more thing. But anyway, before I get into the recipe, I really would appreciate it if you could just listen to me for a second because I want to tell you about this hand mixer that I'm going to be using in this video. So let's get it over here. I got stuff setting over here and here's a cord. But um, look at this mixer. Is that not beautiful? Look at that color. Look at that beautiful pearl red color. And as you can see right here, this is the name. This hand mixer is from a company called Redmond. Now Redmond is an Amazon store, an Amazon seller that specializes in all sorts of really good quality kitchen small appliances, even some not so small things. They have some nice air fryer ovens on there. But anyway, they have such things that you can use every single day in your kitchen to help make everything a little bit easier and also look good while you're doing it. But anyway, look at this. Now I have several hand mixers, okay? I'm not gonna name the brands of those, but I have several hand mixers and I don't want to say they feel cheap, but they feel really light. And I equate that light feeling with, with cheapness because some of them are cheap. But anyway, this mixer here, it's heavy. It has a nice heft to it. So when you pick it up, you know, and, and you're feeling it and you're using it, you're like, mm, this feels like a good quality thing. It's sturdy. It's heavy. And it's pretty. So anyway, Redmond has a lot of different things like this on their site excuse me, um, in a retro style. And you know, this right here, just the way this looks, that this feels very retro to me. And they also have, if you get on there and look, they also have this really awesome toaster. It's white and it's a very retro looking thing. And y'all know I'm all about that. I know y'all don't see my kitchen, but I have a lot of appliances in here that are red. So, you know, in this particular mixer, it comes not only in this awesome red color, but also comes in black. So, you know, the black could pretty much match anything. But this particular mixer is a 300 watt mixer, which is pretty, it's pretty strong, you know, so you're going to be able to just power your way through whatever it is that you want to bake. And if this mixer ain't going to handle it, then why are you baking it to begin with? Anyway, it has five speeds. You can see up here it has five speeds and it has this turbo button. So, you know, when you want like a little boost, like, a, you know, a little extra something, something, like I say in my other videos, you just hit that turbo button and it will just speed it right up. Now, it comes with four attachments, two beaters, and two dough hooks. So, the dough hooks are very useful. You know, as you can see right here, it shows you the dough hooks. This hole is bigger than this one, and it shows you which of the dough hooks to put where. Because, you know, you don't want these little hooks intertwining and, you know, clank, 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 and making a bunch of racket. But anyway, my other hand mixer kind of went kaput, and I'm like, hmm, I'm going to give this one a try, okay? It's got good feedback. It's got good reviews. So, um, yeah, let's jump on into our recipe, and I'm going to be using this mixer to not only make the cupcakes, but we're also going to be using it to make some frosting. And, you know, buttercream frosting, if you want to pipe it, it's going to be kind of thick, and that's kind of a task for a hand mixer. So, anyway, we're going to be putting this baby to the test today. But for our cupcakes, right here, we have two cups of sifted all-purpose flour. And I make sure that I sift my flour. It just makes things a little bit lighter and airier. So we have two cups of the sifted flour. We have one teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of salt, one half cup of Dutch processed cocoa. And right here, we have one and a half cups of sugar. So first off, what I'm going to do is we're going to combine all of these dry ingredients together into one bowl and make sure that we have it all mixed, mixed, mixed. So just dump that in there. I was trying to make this video a bit longer. Um, and some of my videos, when I'm making stuff like this, if I'm really just focusing on the decorating aspect of it, you know, I just have the batter and stuff pre-mixed sitting off to the side. I'm like, for this one, let me just show you this because in my opinion, it's one of the best, um, chocolate cupcake recipes there are out there 
And why am I using Dutch processed cocoa? Hold on, we'll show you the kind that I'm using. I'm using the uh, Ghirardelli cocoa today. There is another brand that I like on Amazon that is excellent. Excellent, excellent. And I'll link to that down below as well. But anyway, we're going to give this a good stir. And I was looking at, at the uh, Redmond site the other day. I use my air fryer oven all the time. But, you know, mine's kind of small. I got one of the smaller ones because I didn't know if I was going to like it or not. And I use it, you know, every day. So I've been eyeing theirs because theirs is nice and it's large. It's a large capacity. You know, it'd be, um, I think it would be pretty good for a family. You know, it's just me and my two littles, but still. Anyway, all right. So this is pretty well incorporated. So I'm going to set this off to the side, and now we're going to get together our wet ingredients. Alrighty, so I have all of my liquid ingredients together. What we have here, we have two teaspoons of vanilla. We have three eggs. In this bowl, we have one cup of milk. And this is two-thirds cup of butter. It has been softened. It's not completely melted. It's just softened up, okay? So what we're going to do, we're just going to dump all this into the same bowl up here. And yes, I like to put my eggs in separate bowls. And that egg yolk, I broke it. Yeah, it wasn't broken when I opened up the shell. But yeah, stuck my finger in it and I broke it. All right, so I'm going to take this spoon over here. All right, and then we're just going to combine everything together. And I'm going to give it a good stir with uh, this spoon just to kind of break up any little clumpies. And then we're going to use the mixer. So I'll have the mixer on low just to kind of blend everything together. That mixer has some power behind it. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> That has some power behind it. So I'm just going to lay that off to the side. And yes, I've already got flour all over the darn mixer. But anyway, now what we're going to get is let's get our big plastic mixing bowl here. And I'm just going to alternate between the dry and the wet ingredients. I want to get my spoon back. But anyway, let's just put a little bit of this in first. I know, doesn't that just look gross? And then we're going to put in a little bit of the dry ingredients. I usually like to do it in thirds, a third, a third, a third, you know? So anyway, we're going to mix this again. All right, so we are done mixing this. And as you can see, let me get my silicone spatula thingy here. As you can see, this is some pretty thick batter, but it's good. It's so good. All right, so let's get our pan with our uh, cupcake liners. All right, so now I have my oven at 350 degrees, and we're going to bake these for 25 minutes. Where'd my cookie scoop go? Oh, no, no, there's going to be some people out there, and I get this comment all the time. Why didn't you cream the butter in the sugar? I do that when I make cookies. When I make, you know, cakes and cupcakes and things of that nature, it's a 50-50 shot as to whether I do it. So I'm going to put this in here. Woo! <laughs> Ric Flair, woo! And, um... I'm going to fill these, eh, I fill mine about halfway full. So usually about one and a half of these scoops here. And this is just your standard cookie scoop. So, um, yeah, about halfway full. And then, like I said, we're going to bake it. And once they cool, then we'll frost and decorate them. But while they're baking, I'm going to go ahead and make the frosting because I'm going to be piping it on and I want the frosting to be nice and thick and I'm going to stick it in the refrigerator for a few minutes. So anyway. All right. So now we're going to make the frosting. Now listen. Okay. I want to backtrack and I want to explain what I'm about to do here because with this, I am going to be creaming the butter. 
And I know I didn't do it with the cupcakes. And listen, I want to go a little bit more in depth with that. Now, when you are making baked goods, when you use your leaveners, the leavener, you know, the thing, you know, it makes it rise. The leaveners put off gases, okay? Now, when you cream the butter and the sugar together, and I mean really cream it, you know, like for three or four minutes, you're putting a lot of air in there. The air in the butter sugar mixture sort of like traps the gases that the leaveners release and it makes it very light and fluffy and then, you know, puff up and get bigger and it gives you like a fine crumb and all of this. When I'm making cupcakes that I'm going to be decorating, like I'm decorating now, I'm not just frosting and sprinkles, I don't want them to rise very much. I want them to stay dense and compact. So let me show you. I just took these out and you see how without creaming the butter and the sugar, it gives you, I got food coloring on me, that's food coloring. It gives you like a more dense, compact item. This is nice and flat, so it's gonna be really nice to hold our frosting, our pumpkin, and the little headstones that we're gonna be putting on here, okay? Now, if I had like a big dome top, it wouldn't work as well. I know, I've been <laughs> baking for a very long time. Um, it doesn't work nearly as well. So this is nice and flat and it's gonna hold everything. So if you're wanting big puffy ones, you know, with the, with the nice tops on them, then cream the butter and the sugar first before you put everything together. But anyway, I wanted to get that out of the way because like I said, I know there's people that are gonna be in the comments asking why and I thought that I'll go more in depth and explain why to you. Anyway, making the frosting. We have one cup of softened butter, one tablespoon of vanilla, over here we have five tablespoons of heavy whipping cream and over here we have yeah, about four and a half cups of powdered sugar. So what we're gonna do first is, I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna put the butter into this big bowl and then once again, we're gonna be using our handy Redmond mixer over here and we're going to just beat this just for a little bit until it's nice and fluffy. Alrighty, I love this mixer. I really do. You know, the more I use it, the more I like it. It's got a lot of power behind it. But anyway, now I'm going to dump in the vanilla. Some people beat in the sugar with the butter before the vanilla and the milk. This is just the way I do it. Put in the vanilla, and now we're going to beat it again. All right, so now we're going to start adding in the powdered sugar just a little bit at a time, and we're just going to beat it, beat it, beat it, until it starts to come together and starts to get pretty thick. And after it starts getting kind of thick, then we're gonna start adding in a little at a time the milk and then alternating back and forth with the milk and the sugar. All right, so as you can see, this is getting very thick and this mixer is not having a hard time at all mixing it. It didn't bog down, it didn't like, you know, like some of them do. <laughs> That's my sound effects. It's doing just fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start incorporating some of this heavy cream and you can see how thick that is. And I still have a decent amount of the sugar over here. So we're just gonna pour some of that in. And now I'm gonna add in my green food coloring. This is sort of a dark green, it's a juniper green. This is a gel food coloring, it doesn't take a whole lot at all. I'm just gonna scoop a little bit out on the knife. And now let's blend that up. All right, so now we're gonna start frosting these. I have my frosting in my frosting bag. I've already done one because my little boy wanted one. But anyway, this is sort of like a spiral um, star tip type deal here and this set is one of my favorite sets i got this off of amazon as well i'll link to that below but anyway i just took a milano cookie and this is the black decorating icing from walmart i put one of these little tips on it you can get the tips they're sold right beside of these tubes of frosting so you can see i just wrote r.i.p on this one and now we have our nice flat cupcake that we can decorate. We're just going to use this kind of like grass. You know, we're just going to pipe it on to kind of make it look like grass. You use whatever tip you want to use. I just happen to like this one. All right, so that is done like so. And now we have this pumpkin candy and we have our Milano cookie. This is why you kind of want it to be flat. So we're just going to take this and just gently kind of just squish it down in there like so. And then I'm just going to stick one of these little pumpkins here like that. How cute is that? I love them. I love them. But um, 
Back to the mixer. I'm thoroughly happy with this mixer and how it performs anywhere, you know, from light tender cakes to the dense and heavy buttercream frosting. So if you would, you know, look down in the description box, check out Redmond, see what all they have to offer. And I think you're going to be happy with whatever you buy. But anyway, if you would give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, check me out on other forms of social media, the links to all of which will be in the description box down below. And I hope to see y'all next time. Bye.